Hola! Welcome to 10 Secrets in Lumion Legacy, the replacement, if not successor, to Pokemon Brick Bronze, the game that unfortunately had to be taken down on April 18th, 2018. F in the chat for our gone but not forgotten homie. But long since been back and re-established as Lumion Legacy, a similarly inspired game where, yep, you guessed it, you snatch Lumions from their home and force them to fight against one another. With love. Here's the first secret. Pyramind. Pyramind is unlocked at level 29 or 30 in the mastery? If someone can confirm that for me in the comments, that'd be awesome. I don't remember the exact value since it's been a while. Either way, you'll be notified about it when you level up and have a 1 in 300 chance of encountering it anywhere in the wild. As you can see, I found mine in a variety of different locations. So don't worry about where you are in the game, you'll come across it eventually. That said, once you're around level 51, you'll be notified about receiving an ancient scepter, which will also be available to buy at one of the Colosseum shops for 48 Colosseum points. Simply use it on your Pyramind and it will evolve into a Ferroglyph. Mutagon. From Palut Campus, make your way down to the sewers. Inside of this place, you will need to collect three parts of the code. The three parts of the code to find are as followed. In a random encounter, you'll notice part one in the background on a whiteboard. Part two, you'll find by going right as you enter from the sewer area and go up the stairs, where the whiteboard will be behind the glass. Part three is far inside this place where Protagon was originally being kept. A woman will be looking at the whiteboard on the left side of the room. Now that you've combined them all, go to room 3 where the lockers are. Inside there is a padlock in the far left corner. Insert your code and you'll receive the Vanticorp keycard. Exit this area and go to route 7. Over here you can unlock this elevator. Other than a book laying around with some backstory dialogue attached to it, there's a colour matching puzzle here. I've already done it but I imagine you'll find it easy to do as well. Now in this tube there will be a Mutagon. Press the button on the right side of the room and it will open allowing you to battle it. I already captured it without recording because I'm a fool, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Cephalops. I believe I already covered Cephalops before in one of my other secrets videos, but I'm gonna do it again for this video. Start off by going to the underwater mining lab and using the UMV. What you're gonna wanna do is interact with the sparkles on the walls until you manage to find 6 different relics from the minigame. After those have been collected, you'll need to find the Deep Lake Tomb entrance which requires them to be inserted for it to open. Once inside, Cephalops will be waiting. The saddles in Atlantean Arcade. In the recent updates of Atlantean City, two arcade machines have been released and three prizes can be unlocked inside of the shop. The Ace Disc Saddle from achieving 500,000 on Disc Drop. The Expert Disc Saddle from getting the maximum score of 999,999 and the Dobo Saddle from the Sent From Hell Flappy Bird inspired minigame where a score of 100 needs to be achieved. Oh yeah, and they each cost a thousand tickets. Buneri. Again, in Atlantean City's Entertainment District, go inside the arcade. Talk to the red-haired girl to see that she wants the biggest plushie from the shop. That would be the huge plushie for 1,000 tickets. In return of giving it to her, she gives you something of equal value. A lost coin. Wow, what a little- Go outside, head to the living district, and talk to this dude up these stairs. Trading the lost coin with him will give you an arcade key. Now with that, it's back to the arcade. You can now enter this room. Playing the disc drop machine, you'll notice that it will quickly get buggy. Just prod around the icons and they'll return back into place. Every time you get 10,000 points, a green triangle disc will fall. After 30,000 points, you should have three on your board unless they've accidentally been destroyed. They can be switched and moved anywhere, so just put them in a line of three. This blue screen in the game will tell you that it worked. Just quit and a short cutscene will play. And there it is. My one looks like cheese. After the first encounter, the only other way of getting another Boonary is to purchase one in the arcade shop for a price of 2,000 tickets. Mari Evolutions. Servalum. I'm probably pronouncing these dead wrong, but I'm gonna continue anyway. Vari evolves naturally at level 20. Wendelin. Have a Vari be defeated and faint in... How do you pronounce this? Hewa? Hewa? Cemetery and it will evolve into a Wendelin. Curlin. With a Fari in your team, head over to the underwater mining lab. Inside, you'll have to collect three different pieces of a petrolift from diving. Return to the surface, head to the back, and then attach them together to revive a fossil. After exiting, your Vari will be triggered and evolve into a Curlin. Zephalon. Under weather in the navigation tab, have a look at when and where strong winds will occur. Once the time has come, you'll see that you'll have to take your Vari there. 
level it up and it will evolve into a Venolin. This one is the easiest. Take your Vari to Sephirite's junkyard and just wait inside of a load of trash until your Vari falls asleep. After doing so, it'll be triggered into evolving. Wenselin. For Wenselin, I recommend having a stronger Lumion to help out to reduce the health of the heavy bag at the gym rats building in Sephirite City. Once the bag's health has been lowered enough, throw Vari into the battle and keep attacking until the match is over. Vari will evolve after getting the final knockout. Buzzolan. For this one, you'll need someone to help you out. They'll need to have a Florent. A Florent evolves from Ansi at level 22 and is found in Gale Forest during the day. After they've established a perfect bond with their Florent, they should see this huge smiled icon above it along with a fart. It's a fart. Take your Vari and walk through the fort, check if it's okay and doesn't now hate you forever, and it will evolve into Buzzolan. Hooray! Tundralan. Unfortunately, with Tundralan, it's only obtainable by leveling up and evolving Vari at Jolly Village. Jolly Village is the yearly Christmas themed winter event place, so be sure to look out for the update around Christmas time if you'd like to obtain one. Wow, would you look at that? A new Vari evolution comes out as soon as I finish this video! Uh... Pyrolon. Coal, from what I remember, is only obtainable from Jolly Village inside the Christmas gift minigame. The description of it also hints to that. Let me know if there's any other ways to get it too. Other than coal, you'll of course need a Vari in your first slot. With those two steps completed, head to Igneous Hollow's new area. Down these steps, you'll find a molten lava area. Of which you'll need to stand in, throw one coal away, see that smoke is now active, walk out of the circle, then back in again, and Vari will be triggered into evolving. Here's a comparison of the rainbow, alpha gleaming, and normal version. I recorded this part of the video while walking my dogs. So there's probably wind and dogs huffing in the background. Next one. Uh. <laughs> Coplin. Coplin? Coplin? I don't know. For this one, you'll need to head back to Pollute Campus once again, to the sewer area and into the laboratory. Inside, keep defeating enough Scorps until you're happy with the amount of strong magnets you've obtained from their corpses. I believe it's a 10% chance of a wild Scorp dropping one once defeated. Now with those strong magnets, go all the way back to Sylvan City, back into Route 3 and finally into Galvanite Cave. Inside, you'll be able to use strong magnets to pull off the shards off the wall. You'll either encounter a Coplin or have a tiny chance of getting a copper nugget. With that done, your coplin will evolve into a copper age at level 29. At this stage, if you're fortunate enough, you'll have a copper nugget from using a strong magnet on the shards too. Use the copper nugget on a copper age and it will evolve into an oxidrate. Kabunga evolutions. Maybe you didn't know this, but the commonly found Kabunga from routes 4 and 6 has three possible evolutions. There's Wiki Wiki, which Kabunga will evolve into after traded. Charitiki, which evolves after a Kabunga is traded for a Cradle. Cradle are commonly found in Igneous Hollow, and Wakalaka, which is only available to people who have bought a Nightmare Orb from Dr. Halloween during the Halloween event places and given it to their Kabunga to hold before trading. Just a heads up before trading, be sure to only trade with people you trust. It's only natural that scammers try to steal, so I recommend asking a friend to help with the trading. Kratul Evolutions Kratul evolves in a similar way to Kabunga and are commonly found in Igneous Hollow. In case you skipped this part. Krakaloa is obtained when you trade Kratul or receive a Kratul. Volkaloa evolves from Kratul when traded for a Kabunga. And Festifer only evolves from Kratul through trading if you've purchased decorative lights from Mr. Jolly in the winter event place, Jolly Village then giving it to your cradle to hold before trading. Again, only trade with people you trust. I've heard recently that there's something called a trust trade, especially in games like Adopt Me. Yeah, uh, that's dumb. Always be sure you're receiving something of equal value in return or only trade with friends you trust. Scorb evolutions. You'll need to capture a Scorb or put one in your party. Over at Pollute Campus, head down to the sewers. Inside, follow left until you reach the second labeled room. Now here, this dude will ask to see it, mentioning how you can upgrade it or whatever. In his upgrades menu, you'll notice that you can evolve it with some specific items. To get these items, repeatedly go about killing the entire score population until you have them. Head back to the man and choose to evolve it. Now with Valens, repeat that process but instead now get three more power cores and one quantum core. Talk to the guy, evolve it, and you'll find yourself with a Gar drone. And that's 10 secrets in Lumion Legacy. Sorta. Depends on how you count them. Either way, there's more I can think of that I'll be sure to cover sometime in the future. Like the video if it was helpful. See ya! Mm -hmm.